Hello dear friends. Today we are going to majorly learn about the trying curve. Okay. So uh, let us first see the rate relationships. The rate relationships they can be studied by considering a simple model which may mimic the conditions of a dryer. So in this model, the wet slab of the material of sufficiently high moisture content, which is to be dried, it is first placed uh, in a tray. Whose bottom and sides they are insulated. Now the air will be blown over the solid under constant drying conditions. That is, uh, constant conditions of air velocity, temperature, humidity, and pressure. Okay. So the superficial water it will diffuse through the surrounding uh, stationary air film and is carried away rapidly by the moving air stream. So periodically uh, the slab is weighed, and the difference in the weights of the two successive periods. Gives the loss of moisture content, that is, uh, amount dried. So the moisture present in the solid, it can be expressed on a wet, uh, wet, wet, or dry weight basis. And the following calculations are made. The first is percent LOD, that is, loss on dry. It is ratio of mass of water in sample upon Total mass of wet sample means how much amount of uh, what is the weight of the sample before drying, and then we will have to substitute. We will have to subtract the weight of dry sample at the end of this experiment. That will give you amount of water which is present in that sample, and that value will be placed here. And the total mass of the water, uh, sorry, wet sample is placed in the denominator. And as as it is a percentage, you have to multiply it by hundred. The next important thing is percent moisture content (MC). Okay, so it is the ratio of mass of water in the sample divided by total mass of the dry sample. Okay, so if you consider this LOD and moisture content in this in the numerator, there is mass of water in the sample, and in the first in the LOD there is Uh, mass of wet sample and in uh, moisture content there is dry sample weight okay again this is a percentage so we will multiply it by 100 the next ratio which is very important or the term is which is very important is the drying rate okay it is the ratio of weight of water in the sample to time into weight of the dry solid okay it is a ratio of weight of water in sample to time And weight of dry solid. Okay, so uh, if you just look at this percent MC and drying rate. Okay, now it is rate. So we have kept time in the denominator. Otherwise, or we can say uh, moisture content. Okay, uh, divided by time will also give you uh, a drying rate. Okay, uh, as Or sorry, in the formulation of moisture content, if you just write time here in the denominator, that formula becomes for drying rate. Okay. So now let us see what is the drying curve. Uh, a drying rate. Okay. When it is plotted against the midpoints of the time period, uh, then we get a curve. Okay. Also, we can plot um, midpoints of moisture content values. Okay. so uh, the behavior of the drying of the solids it can be studied using the drying curves so with the help of these curves we can easily predict the time which will be required for any material to get dried completely the curve is plotted as fmc fmc is free moisture on x axis versus rate of drying on sorry fmc on x axis and drying rate on y axis okay so a typical drying curve it consists of different phases which represent changes that occur during the whole process of drying and these are as follows okay so uh, the rate relationship of drying for drying curve okay now here if you can see the moisture content or fmc is plotted on x axis and the drying rate is plotted on y axis now if you see this graph so it consists of these phases a b a dash b c d 
and D. Okay. In this case, this A B is the initial adjustment period. B C is the constant rate period. C is the critical moisture content. C D is the first falling rate period. D is the second critical period or second critical point. D E is the second falling rate period, and E is the equilibrium moisture content. Now beyond this point, how much amount of energy or how much amount of heat you uh, apply to your substance? Your substance it won't get dried because it contains only its EMC, that is equilibrium moisture content. So heating beyond EMC is a complete waste of time and complete waste of energy. So uh, let us see first the initial adjustment period, which is A to B. Okay. So the time which corresponds to A B is the time in which there occurs. Heat transfer from the air to the material. That is, we can say there occurs absorption of the heat by the material, and slowly, slowly the temperature of the material it will increase. So at the same time, the water it will move up to the surface. Okay, what we say that in the granules the water is present inside the voids. Okay, there occurs mass transfer. So this water it moves up to the surface of the uh, material. Okay. so when you in during the initial adjustment period we are supplying heat to the material so the material surface its temperature increases also because of this increased temperature the water which is present in the void it will start to come or to move towards the surface of the material okay so uh, the water it will vaporize here and this vaporization of water it causes cooling of the solid okay because latent heat of vaporization is utilized and automatically the surface it will get cooled so after some time equilibrium is attained that is rate of cooling and heating it becomes equal so at this time the wet bulb temperature is equal to the temperature of the drying air okay now what is wet bulb temperature it is a measure of how much moisture or water vapor is present in the air and this temperature it is referred by the point b okay so at equilibrium uh, rate of increase in temperature due to dry air is, becomes equal to rate of decrease in temperature due to vaporization so uh, this is the initial adjustment period in the molecule the heat uh, there occurs heat absorption that is increase in the temperature of the material and the water vapor is out and it results into cooling so at equilibrium the rate of this reaction becomes equal to the rate of this reaction and that is given by the time period ab which is called as initial adjustment period now the second period is called as the constant rate period which is given in the graph by bc okay so here the temperature it is going to remain constant why because there is equilibrium okay uh it happens because of the vapor uh, rate of vaporization it becomes equal to the rate of diffusion of water from the solid to the surface okay what is going to happen here uh the amount of water which is present in the vapor it will constantly come out on the surface okay so thus there is formation of a constant film of the water on the solid surface as the evaporating film is replaced by the water from the inside as long as the water from the inside it keeps the surface wet the temperature will remain constant okay so the uh, constant rate period it can be given as rate of vaporization it becomes equal to rate of diffusion of water from the solid to the surface okay now what is happening here when we apply heat to this molecule the water vapors okay which have moved on the surface they have formed a film okay now this is a film of water or water vapor so it will uh, this is a film of water so this water it will evaporate due to the surrounding air temperature right now the rate of this evaporation okay that rate is exactly equal to the diffusion of water from this pores to the surface okay so what is going to happen uh this two things rate of vaporization and water diffusing it becomes equal 
Now, due to this, what is going to happen? How the amount of water which will be vaporized from this film, it will be replaced from the water which is diffusing from the uh, from inside the solid. Okay, so this film which is formed on the solid surface, uh, it is maintained for a long period of time. Okay, so uh, so the temperature it remains. constant okay so the moisture content at the end of the constant period is referred to as the critical moisture content after that comes the period of first falling rate period okay now as the water diffuses to the surface the coarse capillaries of the solid they become water deficient okay the water which is present in the coarse capillaries first they it will get exhausted okay and uh, The, then from small capillaries the water will start to come out okay but the amount of water which is coming out from uh, coarser capillaries is more as compared to that which is coming out from small capillaries okay so uh, due to this uh, the film it is unable to maintain itself on the surface of the uh, solid and the spot where the surface becomes film deficient is called as the dry spots okay so as the time proceeds many dry spots they appear and there is no further liquid to get out uh, and to get evaporated the rate of drying it will start to fall now why the rate is falling because there is no amount of water to get evaporated right so the rate of drying it falls the temperature point at which the drying rate it start to fall is called as the critical moisture content and the time is called as the first critical time the temperature of that dry spot dry spot form it will start to rise okay why because there is occurring no mass transfer only heat transfer is occurring okay and it begins to attain a dry bulb temperature now what is a dry bulb temperature it is the temperature of the air measured by a thermometer which is freely exposed to the hot air so as the number so the number of dry spots it will go on increasing and the rate of heat and mass transfer decreases and it finally results into first falling rate period okay now if you can observe here the film now it is not a continuous one but here the, these are the dry spots why because the portion below here inside the granule it is completely devo devoid of the water uh, inside it and hence nothing is there to evaporate from here and hence the temperature here it will be equal to that of the dry bulb temperature so this film is called as the falling film and these are the dry spots so this is the first falling rate period the second then comes the next and that is the second falling rate period okay so uh, here the time which corresponds to d in the graph it represent the second falling rate period so at this point the fine capillaries they also become water deficient and uh, no film is present on the solid surface so there occurs diffusion to the minimal extent and the dry spot area it goes on increasing so thus there is further fall in the curve which is known as the second falling rate period the temperature at this uh, at which uh, the second falling starts is called as the second critical point and the drying rate it goes on falling till the point is reached where it completely stops and this particular temperature is called as the equilibrium moisture content so the moisture content it will remain in the solid even after drying the solid beyond this point for a long time the drying rate becomes zero beyond emc and drying the solid beyond emc is the waste of time and energy now this is the second falling period no film is there okay all the dry spots they have enlarged in size and hence there is no film on the surface of the uh, material so as there is no further water to diffuse no film on the material surface remains intact and this occurs due to the increased drying spots and uh, hence the material it reaches its equilibrium moisture content okay so uh, crystalline substances they hold water near the surface and hence they show long constant rate periods 
as they can continue to form fill on the surface for a very long period of time but in case of amorphous solids uh, they hold water deep inside okay and in such kind of solids the falling rate periods are long as as long as there occurs low diffusion of the water to the surface because of the path length it needs to travel to the surface okay so uh, this was all about uh, drying curve thank you for watching